Okay, so let's kick start today's session, right? So for today, we will be covering mainly on Go. Okay, so for today, we will be covering mainly on Go. And I've also activated the chat box as well as Q&A box. So along the way, if there are any questions, right, just feel free to put them under either the chat, doc, chat box or Q&A box. It doesn't have to be related to Go. So if there are any other FX pairs that you want us to take a look at, we can go through them together, right? Just feel free to pop the requests either under the chat box or Q&A box. So just a quick introduction of myself, I'm Lee Sing, right? You can find me on LinkedIn as well. So for those of you guys who are watching a recording of this on YouTube, right? Please feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn if you have any questions. And for those of you guys who are with us live right now, right? Please feel free to put your questions under the questions chat. So again, right, doesn't have to be related to Go. If you have any other setups, for example, Euro dollar, pound dollar that you want us to take a look at, right? You can put them under the chat box. So just a quick disclaimer, the information presented here is not to be treated as investment advice. It's for educational purposes only. Okay, so with that, let's take a look at our setup on Go. All right, so Go itself, let me just bring up the chart. So fundamentally, right, there are many factors that determine or move go, right? So they can be the global economic conditions and of course supply and demand. So go itself is seen as a safe haven, which means that in times of uncertainty, right, go tends to appreciate. Of course, go go, right? So one thing about go is that it's also a dollar denominated asset. So what this means is that when dollar, right? So when there when dollar starts to strengthen, right, this could weigh down on go. And also if there are other factors, for example, Fed interest rate decisions, right? So if markets are expecting Fed to continue raising rates, then in that case, that pushes dollar higher and that in turn weigh down on gold prices. So those are some factors to consider, right? In terms of uh, the fundamental perspective. And of course, right, the technical perspective on gold or maybe just moving a step back, right? So apart from Go just being a safe haven asset, Go itself, it's also uh, heavily traded, right? So if you take a look at the uh, chart, so maybe let me just share this chart here. Okay, so currently we are looking at the go chart. I hope that you guys can see this as well. Okay, so this is the go chart, right? So if you take a look at the higher time frame direction on go, right, you can see that in general on the daily or weekly, right, prices are sitting on a key level. So how you can actually combine this with dollars view, right? So go itself, this is spot go. XAU USD, right? You can also take a look at uh, dollar index. Just give me one moment while I switch this. Okay, so yeah, so this is spot go, right? So you can see that on the higher time frame, let's say on your monthly and even the weekly, if prices are sitting on a key level, right? So the idea is that if prices are sitting on a support level or a demand zone, this zone itself, right, if price starts respecting this support zone, you can see that down to your one hour time frame or even the 15 minutes time frame, it will start showing a change in market structure. So what this means is that when prices continue to form lower lows and lower highs, right, if it comes into a demand zone or a higher time frame support level and it starts to respect this level, we will first see that change in direction or change in market structure happen on the lower time frame. So let's take a look at the example, right? So in this, I'll just rewind slightly so you can see this level, right? So this is the picture on the weekly. You can see the weekly support level. And it's a support because price rejected, broke above it, and it's currently sitting on this level as a support. 
And even if you were to put it in close, you can see that if you were to just draw a horizontal line across, right, this level, it's a clear resistance level previously. Price rejected strongly off this level before it broke above currently sitting on the support level. So then the question to ask ourselves is that when price comes into the support level, how do we know that it is going to acknowledge this zone? Because price could just continue much lower to the downside. Right. So in this case, right, if we want to take a look at further confirmation as to whether price is reacting to this higher time frame support, what we can do is that we can move down to our lower time frames. Right. So let's say on one hour. So on the one hour, right, I'm not changing any zones. I'm just zooming down to the lower time frame to look at market structure. So when you're on the one hour time frame, right, notice that when price pushes lower, so when price pushes lower into this support zone that we have, this purple weekly zone, what happens is that along the way down, you can see that it is showing you lower lows and lower highs. So this is a bearish market structure, right? So the idea is that price would continue to form lower lows and lower highs. And in a downtrend, you can see that the highs themselves are not broken, whereas the lows themselves are always being run. Right, so with the same example, right, the same concept in mind, you can see that when price starts forming lower lows and lower highs, what this shows you is that it's still forming a downtrend pushing into the support zone. And this downtrend right, would continue, which means that if price does not respect this support zone, it will continue to form lower lows and lower highs down. Right? But instead, what it shows here is that we can see that while price form a new low, uh, sorry, a new high, just this high here, right? So the assumption is that price would break the structure, pull back, continue to push lower if it's still in a downtrend. But rather what we're seeing here is that price form a new high. And what happens after is that this high in a downtrend, which should hold, right? So if it's in a downtrend, this high should not be broken. So this high that I will mark out in a different color, right? Let's just mark this out in blue, for example. Okay, so this high in blue, Right, so if the downtrend is to continue, price should not break this high. But what we're seeing here is that price broke above the blue line, right? This blue resistance. And this is a first sign of a change in structure. This is also a first sign of acknowledgement of this weekly support zone here. So this purple zone that we have. Okay, so the idea is that if we do see any reversal, on the higher time frame, it's if it, if it is sitting on a support zone or even a resistance zone for that matter, right? We will first see that reversal happen on your lower time frames in the form of market structure. So of course, along with this, right, we can combine all we have learned throughout the educational sessions, right? So looking at indicators, right? So examples of indicators that you can take a look at in the trending market, right? So if we're assuming this change in structure and price to take on an uptrend, right, respecting this support zone, you can take a look at moving average crossovers, right? So if price crosses above the 20 exponential moving average, right? So when price crosses above the moving average of the 20 EMA, right, this can be an initial trigger for a long position. You can even take a look at MACD, right? So these are more useful in trending markets. So MACD, we will be covering the series in further details on Thursday, but the idea is that this is a moving average convergence divergence, right? So the blue line is the MACD line and the orange line is the signal line. So in an uptrend, right? So we talk about which areas to focus on. So in an uptrend, which is indicated, right? With that change in structure here, we want to focus on the blue line, the MACD line, crossing above the signal line. So this is a bullish signal. And if it crosses above the signal line, and if it crosses above zero, right? So which means that your histogram, which basically measures the difference between the MACD line and signal line. So if MACD line crosses above the signal line, your histogram is above zero. So in this case, right, you can see that if MACD crosses above the signal line, so let me just clear this drawings, right? So again, right, this high, we have price setting on the support zone, right? We highlighted this area, the weekly support zone. We have the break in structure, which is a first sign, right? The break of the last high, which is this area, right? So this is the first sign of a bullish structure on the lower time frame. And it only works because it's sitting on a higher time frame support level. 
And following that, right, we can use MACD crossover, which is more suitable in trending markets as further confirmation. So when MACD crosses, right, so the blue line crossing above the signal line, this is a bullish uh, signal. And also when the blue line crosses above zero, right, so, and your histogram itself, it's green, right, above zero. So histogram measures the difference between the MACD line and signal line. So when that happens, right, this can be an initial trigger, trigger for a long position. Okay, so this is the picture on gold, right? I'll talk a bit more. So this is a market structure. So the idea that in every structure, right? So three types of market structures. We have the downtrend, we have the uptrend, and we have prices ranging sideways. In a downtrend, you can see clear lower lows and lower highs being formed. The assumption is that if price continues in a downtrend, we should not be seeing a break of the last high. It should continue to the downside, breaking the previous low, which we can use as a profit target. In an uptrend, right, so this is an uptrend, you can see price starts forming consecutive higher lows and higher highs. In this event, you can see that usually a pullback to a support level would be a nice entry, right, before price continues to the upside. And usually what happens in an uptrend is that the lows themselves would hold, whereas the highs themselves are weak, which also means that these highs are useful as profit targets, but they might not be as ideal for entries. In a ranging market, right? So this is the third type of structure we have. In a ranging market, prices are moving sideways. You can see support and resistance levels being respected, right? But there is no clear direction, right? So you can see both support resistance levels being respected. So I've also covered in previous sessions, right? This ranging market on the lower time frame. So what you're seeing on the lower time frame, right? If you move to the higher time frame, it's actually represented by a doji. Right, so a doji with a small candle. So dojis themselves represent uncertainty. So small candle with relatively long wicks. So in previous sessions, right, we covered a bit more on doji. Right, so I also shared on how we can use dojis on the higher time frame to help us to identify the general range. So for those of you guys who are trading breakout trades, right, understand that for breakout levels, right. So how this works is that price range in price uh, price trade sideways in a range supporting or rather uh, uh, adhering to the support and resistance levels, right? And once price breaks below this range, so this is the breakout, right? So once price breaks below it and closes below it, it will usually retest this range again as a resistance, right? And continue to the downside because this break itself, right? Especially in a range also represents a break in structure. So if price has already have a pre, it already has a, a downtrend, right? A prior downtrend that's formed. Then when price breaks below this range, right, this itself is actually a continuation of the trend. So with that in mind, right, how can we actually use the higher time frame patterns to help us to determine this range? Right. So that's the question, right? So how do we determine that? In order to determine that, so in order to determine that, right, what we can do is that we can take a look at the dojis that are formed on the higher time frame. So let's just see if this concept that we have, right, it's I actually makes sense, right? So we identify a doji, right? So let's take a look at this example. You can see this is a doji on the daily time frame. And also one more thing to highlight, right? The reason why we should use the higher time frame to find these dojis, it's because the higher time frame, right? How this works is that each candle itself represents a day. So on the daily, it just means that this candle captures the open, high, low, and close prices within the day itself. But if you're on the five minutes time frame, right, then this data is basically reflective of the open high low close prices within that five minutes. It's still a doji, right? But the difference is that on the lower time frame, it's a lot choppier because, right, every uh in every minute, right, it captures new data. So there's a lot more noise. Whereas on the daily time frame or even the higher time frame for that matter, you can see that this itself, right, structure is clearer. And a lot of these wicks on the lower time frame, right, they are not reflected in your higher time frames. Okay, so this is the reason why we always start our analysis top down, right? Using the higher time frame and moving down from there. So the higher time frame helps us to determine the general direction of the market. So okay, with back to the doji, you can see that this is a doji, right? So we are seeing this small candles with relatively long wicks. So once we've highlighted the daily, the doji on the daily time frame, right? I want to check if this doji actually represents a range on the lower time frame. So let's take a look at that. You can move down to the one hour time frame. You can move down to the 15 minutes, right? So you can see this doji that we have on the daily time frame, right? If you move down to the one hour time frame, 
this area, it's basically this range here. So you can see this support resistance level that's being respected, right? So we are seeing this range where price starts trading sideways. So it's acknowledging both the resistance and support levels until it finally breaks. And it's characterized by a pretty strong break here, right? So you can see that price starts consolidating, but there's not enough buying pressure to push it higher. And what happens after is that price just broke right through it. And this candle, right? We're seeing a very strong bearish candle, huge bearish candle down, which means that there is sustained selling pressure, right? And once price breaks below and closes below this range, right? So once it closes below this range, and this purple range is basically the daily doji that we found. So once it closes below this range, notice what happens after, right? Price pulls back. We tested this as a resistance and continued to the downside. Okay, so you can see that whatever doji that we are finding on the daily picture, right, this area, especially if there is already a downtrend established, right, then these areas themselves can actually present good entries. So even though they are on the higher time frame, right, but these areas themselves, you can see that if I were to just highlight this doji, the same daily doji, but this time I will mark it in uh, this, right, so this daily doji here. So you can see that this daily doji, Right, if I were to just extend this across, following the break and close of this, this uh, support level, right? so it became a support and resistance level. So following the break and close of this level, you can see that this then presents an entry here. So price push lower. Price entered into this zone. right? And so if you're taking lower or shorter term trades, right, then in this case, on the lower time frame, you can see that the lower time frame itself same thing, right? If price comes into a resistance area, we want to see a failure of or a change in structure on the lower time frame first. So if you're to just, just zoom out further, you can see this area here, right? So if price comes into this zone, the first or the first reversal it's clear because when price enters this resistance area, which is your daily doji, right? This purple zone is the daily doji. You can see that when price enters this daily doji or this uh, resistance area here, right? The pyro trend is still bearish. Why? Because again, right, we talk about bearish trend forming consecutive lower lows and lower highs and the highs themselves hold, right? So if you take a look at the pyro trend, right, if you have to just mark the highs and lows, you can see even in close, the highest point, right? So I just mark out significant swing points. So you can see the subsequent highs and lows, right? So when price pulls back into this zone on the daily, it's still bearish. And again, right, we can zoom down further. So given the fractal nature of markets, right, if I apply the same concept here, right, so let's say that we are taking short positions. We want to take short positions when price enters this uh, daily doji, right, this daily resistance, but we're unsure of when to take this because regardless, right, you can see that this range is still pretty huge. Okay, so in this case, right, we're looking at about 200 pips. Right, so in this case, you can see that when price, oh, sorry, 2,000 pips. So in this case, right, when price comes into this, area here, you can see that when price pulls back into this zone, right, we want to ask ourselves the same question. So if price pulls back into a resistance area, at what point in time would I know that it does respect this resistance zone? Right, so that's the question that we want to ask ourselves. So when price comes into this resistance area, right, because if it's in an uptrend on the lower time frame, right, so focus on just this leg, focus on just this portion of this the pullback, Right, so if price pushes, okay, let me just remove all this, right, and we'll keep the doji area as it is, and we will move to the lower time frame to, uh, to see this. So let me just again bring back this purple doji. Okay, so nothing else changed, right? So if we go back to the one hour time frame earlier, so we have established that we have a power down trend, right? So when price pulls back into this zone which is this point in time here. We have as we have a power downtrend with price forming lower lows and lower highs. So this is fine, right? But within this whole purple zone, right, the reversal can be anywhere. Price could come back in deeper or it could push deeper into the zone before it does its reversal. On this case, right, it just taps slightly into it, the previous resistance area as well before reversing. So in this case, right, if you want to use the lower time frame as a confirmation, we can actually do that. So the question to uh, the question right would be when when would we know that this is reversing? So if you go to the lower time frame, right? So notice how we talk about trends earlier and market structure. 
you can see that on this 15 minutes time frame, for example. All right, so pushing into this purple area, this resistance zone, you can see that prices are in an uptrend, right? So when price pushes into this resistance area, which is basically this area here, right? So this whole leg up on the 15 minutes time frame, or even if we want to uh, check this even clearer, right, on the five minutes time frame. Right, so basically going down to the lower time frame to try and find that confirmation. You can see on the lower time frame. Okay, so let's say I'm on a five minutes time frame. So again, you can see it pushes into this purple zone. And the trend up, right, within this whole pullback leg itself, notice that prices are actually in a bullish structure. Right. So if I were to put it, put this whole thing in close, right, I'll just highlight the significant reversal points in a different color. So that we can see this. Okay, so let's highlight it in pink. So low point, I have a high, a higher low, a higher high, a higher low, higher high, so on and so forth, right? So I have higher lows and higher highs that are being established and a new low that's being formed here. So when price pushes into this resistance area, you can see that on the five minutes, right? How do we know whether it's actually acknowledging this zone? It's when price starts breaking the low. So in an uptrend, right, we're seeing price form consecutive higher lows and higher highs. And once price starts breaking this, right, it shows that it is potentially acknowledging the higher time frames resistance. And we're seeing this happen here as well, right? So once price starts forming a new low over here, you can see that it consolidates slightly. And this range that we're seeing on the five minutes, you will probably find a doji on the higher time frame maybe on the one hour, on the four hours, right? So this consolidation, this range that we're seeing on the five minutes, you can see that price forms a new low. And again, the assumption is that if the uptrend is to continue, price should continue forming a higher high. But rather what happens here is that price then breaks below this low, you can see. So this is the first sign that it is indeed respecting this higher time frames resistance and it's in line with the higher time frames out of flow. So once price breaks below this structure over here, right? This area, bringing in the whole supply demand or selling from doji, right? So it can be breakout traders or, or no, whichever you like to call it. But you can see this is the range, right? So this is the last range that we have, right? So the same idea that we're applying, recall that this was the daily range that we found. And right now we're applying the similar concept, but onto the lower time frame, right? So onto the five minutes. So in this case, right, I want to put this in a different color. So the five minutes range that we have, you can see the consolidation before it breaks and again right this breakout again is characterized by bearish candles you can see strong bearish candle down break and close below with relatively long body once price breaks and close below it this is the bearish structure right it shows that the downtrend has been established right price breaking below the lows pulling back into the range that we have before continuing to the downside okay so by combining this you're basically using the higher time frames resistance and also the lower time frames market structure, right? So supply or the range which price broke and retrace, and also lower time frames market structure to determine this entry. So this entry that you have, right? This cell that we have, it's based on this higher time frame, right? And for price to acknowledge this and seeing that change in structure on your lower time frames. Okay, so back to this range, right? So you can see this five minutes, right? So if you move to the one hour, for example, let's see if we can actually catch a doji here. Right, so if you're on the one hour time frame, you can see this area. So let me just clear the hide the drawings, right? So this the same blue zone that we have, right? You can see this is the doji. Right, I'll just hide the drawings. You can see this doji here. Oh, oh I can't hide the drawings, but yeah, this this is the doji. Essentially, so basically, what we're saying is that on the higher time frames, right? The doji is represented on the higher time frames. If you move to the lower time frames, they're basically the range that we're seeing. And you are seeing this here on the five minutes. We're also seeing how the concepts apply on go, right? Looking at just doji's essentially range, a breakout of that range, a retest of it again as a supply or resistance area, right? And waiting for lower time frame market structure confirmation for the setup. Okay, so you can see that this doji that we saw on the one hour, this that I've circled on the one hour, it's basically a ranging market. You can see this blue blue box that we have highlighted on the five minutes. Okay, so I hope that this is clear so far and it's helpful, right? So if you want to take a look at other indicators, we can also do that. Right? Or if you want to take a look at it just purely based on price action, right? That's possible as well. 
Right, so if you take a look at another setup, right? So let's see, uh, let's take a look at, I'll try and find a setup where we can look at a long example, right? So let's see here. So this is an example of a cell, right? So if you take a look at a one hour. So again, on the one hour time frame, let me just clear all these drawings, right? So right now where we are on the higher time frame, trying to find if there are any dojis, right? So you can see this area, right? We have a doji here. Right, so notice this doji on the daily time frame. So again, right, as we have discussed, this doji on the daily time frame just represents a trading range on the lower time frame. It can be the one hour, the 30 minutes, right? But if you don't want, uh, or you have a hard time trying to identify those range on the lower time frame, we can just use dojis on the higher time frames. And once that has been established, right, so we have this doji, you can see that what happens after the doji. So after this range, Right, so after price trades with this doji, what happens after is that this is followed by a very strong bullish candle, right? So this shows the break of the range to the upside. And what happens after the break of this range? Once this range, it's broken, right? So this is the same as breakout trades where price trades in a range, it breaks out, retests, right? So this then becomes a demand area, right? So when price pulls back into the demand area here, you can see that right now it's consolidating. So it pulls back into this demand area, this candle here. Let me just hide this MACD for a while. Oops. Okay, so it pulls back into this area, right? So same thing, we want to ask ourselves the same question, right? So on the four hours or one hour, right? Understanding that the higher time frame would show a clearer picture, right? So if you're on the four hours time frame or even the one hour time frame, so moving into this area, you can see that again, price starts pushing. Right, so it starts pushing into this support area on the daily. This is the daily doji, right? So we call this blue zone as the daily doji. Pushing into this support area, what we have here, it's that price starts again forming lower lows and lower highs, right? So if I mark out the highs and lows, you can see consecutive lower lows and lower highs. Okay, so in this case, right, if I were to put it in close, you see pretty much the same picture as well. Just trace out the major moves, right? So lower lows and lower highs. This is the last high that's being formed. And what happens after price again, right? So the assumption is that if the downtrend is to continue, because we don't know how deep price would push into the support area, right? Price could always continue to the downside and push deeper into the support zone before it reverses. Or it could just continue to the downside, acknowledge the support zone for a bit before it continues in its downtrend. Right, so we wouldn't know. Right, so we wait for the market to tell us. So in this case, right, you can see that when price pushes into the support zone, the first sign of a change in structure comes in here. Right, so when price pushes into the support area, this is the last high. So again, the understanding is that if it continues in a downtrend, price should continue in a downtrend. It should break below the previous low. But instead, what happens is that price broke above the high and you're seeing that change in structure and higher lows and higher highs starting to fall. Okay, so that's the picture on the one hour time frame. Here. Oops. Right, so once price breaks above this, once you have that break in structure here, essentially this high. So once price breaks above this area, it shows us that price could potentially be respecting this higher time frame, this daily doji, or higher time frame support or demand region, right? And again, right, then we want to start identifying demand zones, right? So demand zones that we can potentially trade from. So again, right, demand zones themselves, it can be the lower time frame. You can take a look at, again, ranges, right? So dojis on your lower time frames. So in this case, right, what we want to identify, so when price starts pushing to form higher lows and higher highs, right? This is an, this is an example of a doji. You can see this area here, right? So of course, a lot of this... A lot of it is on hindsight, right? Of course, looking at this, I wouldn't have identified this doji, but assuming that we are somewhere here in time, right? So let's say if we're seeing this play out and we are seeing this bullish structure, it makes sense to identify this doji as a demand area, right? So I'll just, again, pull this across as the demand. But what I want to highlight, so this is the part that comes in. So recall that in the earlier... Uh, in the earlier example, right, we talk about using the five minutes or even the lower time frame for confirmation. And this is important, right, because again, if price respects this one hour time frame doji, right, so if we're seeing any form of respect of this demand on the one hour time frame, right, what should happen on the five minutes is that we'll see price consolidate or start showing you a change in market structure. Okay, so if you go down to the lower time frame, it can be the five minutes or if you want it uh, on the 15 minutes, right, so as long as there's clear market structure. 
So on the 15 minutes, right, there isn't anything much coming into this demand area. You can see coming into this one hour doji that we've highlighted earlier, price just continues through. It doesn't show any change in structure, right? And even if you have to move down to the five minutes time frame, you can see on the five minutes, there is again no clear signs of change in structure here, right? So you can see pushing into the support area, we have again bearish structure in forms of lower lows and lower highs, right? So again, if I to mark out this move, so you can see subsequent lower lows and lower highs. So if price were to continue, or if there's any signs of respect of this demand zone, it should start changing, it should start changing structure to the upside. But we're not seeing that signs there, right? So which is why this lower time frame confirmations, right? Using applying the same concept by applying them across different time frames and combining this analysis can be useful. Okay, so I hope that this has been helpful so far. Right? If there are any questions, please feel free to put them under the chat box and Q&A box. For those of you guys who want a recording of this session, right, you can actually find them, on, find them on Vantage YouTube page. So just go to vantagemarkets.com. So under vantagemarkets.com, right, this area, oops. Okay, so under education and tools, educational webinars. I just scroll down, you should be able to see the schedule, right? And the different speakers. So we have webinars on a daily basis. And on Wednesdays, we have our uh, specific topics. Thursdays are educational sessions. We are covering MACD series for this uh, month. And then of course, right, for Friday, we're covering on Aussie dollar. So you'll be able to check the schedule here, right? So we have the webinars on a daily basis, right? So you can sign up for them. And what happens after it's that uh, these sessions are recorded. So you can actually click on the previous recordings and this would bring you to our YouTube page. So you will be able to see the recordings here. Yep, so these are all our recordings, right? You can take a look at them. And yeah, so this session will be recorded as well, right? So if you do want to refer back, you can actually do that. Okay, so I hope that has been, uh, the session has been useful, right? So if you guys have any questions, let me see if there are any questions. So it doesn't seem like we have any questions for today, right? So if not, then that's what we have for today, right? Thanks everyone. Have a great trading day, right? And we'll catch you guys again tomorrow.